Hello, welcome back. This is lesson three extra, and we are discussing themes, how to edit themes as a developmental editor in this section. All right, so editing themes in fiction is one of the most important tasks you are faced with as a developmental editor, right? Um, a theme is a fundamental message or the central idea or the original picture, what will I say, the original meaning that you want your work to have, you know, when it comes to an author. And is a fundamental message or a central idea that runs throughout the story, right? So a theme is what gives a story or a narrative depth. It gives it meaning. And then it gives it that whole emotional resonance. When you ask people, well, what did you learn from this story? You know, especially for children's stories and all of that. The first thing that comes to their mind to say, oh, I learned that I shouldn't do this, is usually drawn from the theme, the main theme now, because a work can also have several themes. As a developmental editor, your role is to ensure that the theme is clear, consistent, and, of course, effectively woven into every aspect of the story. So in this part, we'll be learning how to identify, how to access, and how to develop themes within a manuscript to help the author achieve a powerful and organized narrative. A theme is the central idea or message that the author wants to convey through their story, as I have said. It is not the plot, but rather it is the deeper meaning, or let me say the why, yes, the why behind the events and the character actions. That's the theme. Okay, now for example, uh, most of the themes or most of the common themes you have in fiction writing is usually around love, betrayal, freedom, the quest for identity and self um, awareness, struggle between good and evil. These are very common themes among fiction. All right, now we're going to discuss how to edit themes within four major subheadings. So I'm going to look at it in those four major blocks. Number one, we want to identify the theme. You as an editor, when you take a manuscript, one of your first rules should be when you're editing for theme. Now remember, we have learned how to check out for characters, plot, and all of that. So when you're also editing for theme, it has to be on an isolated process so that you can do it thoroughly. So in identifying the theme, which is the first part of this four part, there are two steps you need to take. Number one is you have to first understand the author's intention for this work. And that is done by communication, right? You need to start by discussing with the author what they believe the theme of their story is. They have to recount it themselves. They have to be sure about it because that's what they are actually selling in that work. Now, it is this discussion that will give you insight into the intended meaning that he has put into the plot. Some of the questions you have to ask the author to make sure that you can understand his intentions are questions like, what do you want readers to take away from this story? Right? Um, a second question you can ask is, what is the central idea or the moral of the story that you are exploring? All right? The third question you could ask the author is, are there any sub-themes or other secondary messages other messages you want to pass across in the story, apart from the main theme. And that's why I said initially that themes are usually classified into main and sub-themes. There, there is a central theme, and then there should be also be sub-themes. Anywhere human beings are gathered, even if it's a fiction work, there will always be sub-themes. Now, that's the first step in identifying the theme. The second step you need to take in identifying the theme is to analyze or to assess the manuscript. And, of course, there are also two ways you can do this. First of all, you have to read this work just looking out for the theme. You get? So, as you read through the manuscript, you are looking for the recurring ideas or the recurring conflicts or the recurring character behaviors and acts that are going to suggest what the theme of the work is. So, in analyzing it, you have to read through looking out for these things so that you can identify or start pointing it towards what the main theme is and other things, of course. Other thing to do in this step is to look at also the character and the plot, right? So when you're reading through, you're considering how did the main character or the protagonist's journey and how does the story's major events or conflicts also relate to this theme that you're identifying? Does the plot reinforce this theme 
or does it detract from it? These are things you should be looking out for. But remember I said the second step is analyzing a manuscript and you do this in two ways. When you're reading, read, read to identify the theme through ideas, conflict and character acts that are suggesting the theme. Then the second part is look at the character and plot. How do they, how do their actions and the storyline reinforce the theme? Or maybe does not, so that you know where to work on. For example, if the author is intending that in this story, I want the theme to be about, say, the dangers of over ambition or the dangers of unchecked ambition, right? Now you ask yourself, does the protagonist rise and fall in that story clearly reflect this message? So the writing action and the falling action, does it reflect this message of dangers of unchecked ambition? Why you shouldn't be over ambitious and all of that? You get it now, right? Now let's look at the second point of this. The next we're going to look at, of course, is how to assess the theme. Now you can do this in three ways. Because this work is already written, you have it on your desk or on your laptop. You are going to ask yourself, so how do I find out what this the theme of this work is about, even though you're reading through? So you're going to do it in three ways. Number one, read and assess for clarity. Is the theme clear? Right? So you determine you have to determine whether the main theme is unmistakable throughout the manuscript. It doesn't have to hide. It doesn't have to be something you're find, you know, trying to justify. Like I think that from what is implied here it shows that no, it has to be obvious. It has to be unmistakable throughout the story. A theme should not be subtle. It shouldn't be like I draw inference from this character. No, to say that the theme. No, it has to be the main original idea or message. It shouldn't be lost on the reader, right? It shouldn't also be explicit in a way that is as if you're preaching it. You will not be preaching at all, right? In fact, one of the signs of knowing a weak theme, that a, a theme is not so coherent all through, is that the story will be disjointed. You will feel it when you're reading it. It will be disjointed. The message will be unclear. Even the character actions at some part will not align with the intended theme. So these are ways to know that a theme is weak so that you can get to work on exactly what to do. Now the second step in assessing the theme is you have to assess the theme on consistency. It has to be consistent. Are there any scenes, that are what I'm going to ask you, so are there any scenes or some of the subplots or character decisions that are contradicting or weakening the theme that you've identified? That's how to assess for consistency because it means that at the point where these things are identified, the story is disjointed a bit, so the theme is not consistent. If the theme of a story, for instance, is about the corruption of power or, in, or the corruption of the influence of power, you have to ensure that all the plot developments and the character acts support this idea rather than introducing conflicting messages. Sometimes you feel like something else they're trying to pass across. You know what I mean? So it has to be consistent across board and you look at it through subplot the scenes the characters and everything usually when i teach about consistency of themes one of the questions i get is okay so what if the character acts contradictory in even in that story even though he's a major actor in the sense that maybe he withdraws and decides not to be the archetype for instance for this theme of corrupting influence of power how will you represent it? The way to drive the theme, let me put it like that, is if the major character is trying to pull out, it means that as the author, you're going to be superimposing his colleagues who are in power, or who, who even look down on him because of the decision to maintain a sort of sanity, a due process, humanity. He decides to pull out for some reason because he's considerate of other human beings and not drunk on power. And how his withdrawal made him look like he was going to lose out, then the people who went ahead to keep doing their corruption and all that, you have to now reinforce that with how they ended up badly. So that at the end of the day, the main character is shining through as an example of not allowing corruption to engulf you because you have influence of power, if you get what I mean. So there are so, so many dynamics. I know we have discussed a bit of this in characterization. It doesn't always mean that your characters will be like zombies. They are trying to act out the theme. So they are moving and acting. No human being is <laughs> act like that. Remember we talked about your characters has to be true to type. Yeah. Human beings can contradict themselves too, but it has to 
balance out at every point because at the end of the day we are driven by our value system and who we are and our upbringing so don't introduce conflicting messages just because you're not sure of how to reinforce the theme especially because i said again your theme is not supposed to be preachy like you're driving the moral story into the readers it makes it boring and it doesn't even cut it right so another step you need to take in assessing the theme is the third step, which is you have to assess or evaluate for depth. Um, if the theme doesn't have depth, you will know. Now, consider whether the theme is explored in a meaningful way. I think that also goes back to what I was just explaining. A strong theme should be varied. Like now, if the theme of a story is love, for instance, there should be part of it that should be talking about sacrificial love. There has to be a character or a, a series of events that showed how people can give of themselves can be selfless so it's still love but it's take is talking about love in different shade, shades it could be love when somebody when a mother decides to give her life to go to jail on behalf of her child it could be love that is also romantic all of that so a strong thing should be varied and it should offer layers of meaning that at the end of the day that was makes it overarching in the sense that you can't miss it so you have to offer layers of meaning and it has to provoke thoughts in the reader. Okay, so that's how to assess for depth. If the theme is love, does the story explore different aspects of love like sacrifice, unconditional love, or the pain of losing a loved one or the pain of losing love? So you see, so it has to be varied, but it still comes under the umbrella of love. That's what I mean, okay? Third part is, how do you improve the theme of a work? You have noted the work, you have read the theme, you have seen where the issues are, so how do you improve it? How do you enhance it? Now, there are four steps you can do that also. Number one is you have to strengthen the character curves or the character arcs, right? How do you do that? You have to make sure that your character development is aligned with the theme. Your characters have to act out this theme and the sub themes ensure that the protagonist's journey closely ties to the theme your character should grow remember your characters to change remember they should also struggle and face conflicts in ways that reflect the central message the central message so if for instance the theme of a story is redemption the protagonist might actually start very flawed very have a very strong weakness and then gradually, we must see him in the story grow and get to a point of repentance and seeking atonement for his past mistakes. You understand what I mean now? That's how, how you can drive that theme of redemption. Now, the second thing you should do in trying to improve the theme of a work is to refine the plot points. How do you do this? You have to adjust the plot to serve the theme. That's it. Review key plot events. That, and then ensure that those events reinforce the thing. You may suggest like reordering the scenes, adding new conflicts into the story, or cutting off extra subplot that don't really contribute to the theme, right? So this is how to adjust the plot in trying to refine it. For an example, in a story that is about sacrifice, for instance, a very climactic moment might just be where the protagonist is about to choose between his personal gain and maybe the well-being of other people you get what i mean and this should be you know one of the things that should highlight the theme for instance for example see something you have to do intentionally in adjusting the plot okay the third step you need to take in trying to improve the theme is enhance the symbols and the motifs in the story now using symbolism so just different ways the author can use symbols motifs um certain reoccurring images to subtly reinforce the theme throughout the story now, for example in a story about maybe time then the value of time for instance if you use the re reoccurring image of a broken clock think about that if you use the the, Im the image of this clock it might symbolize the protagonist's struggle against inevitable change. You, you get what I mean? As I'm talking about this, I'm picturing more of a movie you know, than a book, but you get what I mean. I mean, it's the same thing, just that this is 
a motion picture and this story is told in letters, right? So symbols can do the job. When you enhance them, when you use them, like what I mentioned the other time, something is set in a quiet bomb in Nigeria. You might not really have to mention it to know that, okay, we're in a quiet bomb. You might just show the palm, you know, the Dakada palm, and everybody just know, oh, okay, yeah. You know what I mean? Symbols can tell without being nosy, without being loud in that sense. So this example of a, clock, a broken clock is an example that can paint the picture that I, of what I'm saying. Now, the, step, the fourth step is to ensure that your theme is subtle in a way that is suiting. So it, it, you can't ignore it, but it overwhelms you and it brings you into the story. So you have to avoid being heavy-handed in that sense while you're enhancing the theme. So make sure that you maintain that subtleness. Let characters and gestures tell the story or tell the theme right now rather than voicing it, using it a lot in dialogues. You know what I mean? Readers should discover this theme naturally through the narrative rather than feeling it's being forced upon them. By the narrative, I mean by the story, the plot, the costume, the symbols, the gestures. She suggests these things without stating it obviously. For example, instead of having a character directly state the theme, <laughs> ensure that the theme is communicated through actions, decisions, and interaction. I already said that, right? Now, let's look at the final part of this section, which is the, the real process of editing for theme as a developmental editor. There are four practical applications you need to consider. Of course, step one, naturally, for every editor is to review the manuscript that you have gotten by first initially reading through. So you have to conduct a first read through of the manuscript, focusing solely on identifying and understanding the theme or the themes. Then take notes on how the themes are presented or how the theme is presented and note any area where, where the theme is unclear or where the theme is inconsistent, right? So that's the first step in reviewing the manuscript. Number two is then provide feedback as usual and discuss with the author so that the author knows what exactly you're doing. Share your observations, discuss how the theme can be strengthened and of course how it can be better aligned, how it can be better aligned with the plot and the character development so that the author knows what's, what's happening in his story so he doesn't feel disconnected from what he's birthing in that sense. And you could do this by saying something like I noticed that even though your theme appears to be about ensuring love for instance, there are several chapters where the characters' actions seem to contradict this. Let's explore how these scenes can be revised to better support the theme. So you can be asking for a meeting or FaceTime or, you know, correspondence, however it is that you want to come to an agreement on what you want to do, right? And then you'll be able to do that. The third step is, of course, revising in collaboration with the author. So you have to work on the revisions and the things you've noted. You begin to work now on the things you have um, identified with the theme. Of course, collaborating with the author in revising back and forth, back and forth. You know how that goes. Now, of course, this might, this will involve a lot of rewriting scenes, describing deeper character motivations, adjusting the pacing of the story, all of that to ensure that the theme is clear. And consistent okay key takeaways for, for this part is of course identifying the theme working closely with the author to identify the theme and ensure it's clearly articulated the second is evaluating the theme assess for clarity consistency and depth of the theme throughout the manuscript and then going ahead to enhance the theme strengthen the theme through uh, deeper character development plot refinement and the use of symbolisms and motifs while maintaining subtlety right action time please write down the steps you would take as a developmental editor to edit a fiction manuscript step by step in order to deliver a great book content number two assuming this manuscript is 60,000 words how many weeks would you typically give as your turnaround time for delivery three how much are you likely to charge your client for this work so this is what you're going to also have in the PDF attached, download, and then get to work and see you in the group.